right guys, so the main thing that we have to get done right now is setting up our grow tent. I'm gonna open this box up, it's kinda big. Uh, and I will walk you step by step on how to set up your grow tent. Let's just cut this baby open and get started. All right, so I'm just gonna cut open this box right here and we will check out what is inside. So, you have this cool little protective sheet. We don't need this. We have our main tent canvas. It is big and heavy. Put that to the side for now. Your tent also comes with instructions, but because you're just watching this video, I'm just gonna walk you through it, cool. You also have a ton of tent poles that all have numbers labeled onto them with these little stickers. These tent poles are labeled one through five and we'll go over more about that in a second. We also have these connector joints. These connector joints are gonna be at the top and bottom corners of your tent and also in the middle. Uh, but we'll go over more about this in a second. Also, we have these support cross beams. These are gonna come in handy and they're gonna strengthen up your grow tent as well. And, and these are just the rest of your poles, which we'll figure out in a second as soon as we start building base and stuff. So one of our first steps is we're gonna find all of our number 110 poles and we are just gonna lay them out in a square and then we'll just start connecting them. Okay, so we have our base roughly laid out. I'm gonna go over these three different joints and where they need to go. These are gonna be in the corners. You want the black bottoms to be on the floor and they will support all your corners. These guys will be in the middle of the short length side. So these are gonna be in the middle of the sides of your tent and it looks like a big T, basically. And for the third one, these are gonna be in the middle of your tent lengthwise. I hope that made sense. I'll show you guys how it all snaps together. That is a corner piece. It's just these little pins snap in like that and that. Here we have a middle piece. Basically, it just snaps in like that and it snaps in like that. Here we have another middle piece. And again, we're just gonna snap them on. Snapping it on. Talking to myself like a crazy person. And number four goes and easy peasy. There you go, just like that. All right, so we have our base done. The next step is to take our number two poles and put them all up into each of the connecting joints. All right, now that we are done with inserting number two poles into our joints, we are gonna put number three poles directly on top of our number two poles. The way I want you guys to do this is to work in basically a frame. I know that if you try and put this in here, it's just gonna fall over. Because they're a little flimsy, I want to build the tent poles to come across like this first. I think it'll be easier for me to just show you guys than to talk about it. So let's just do that.
Guys, so what I did while the camera was off is that I attached all of the top pieces to the tent pole. All right, once you are done assembling your tent frame, we are gonna grab our canvas, we're gonna unzip all the compartments, and then we are gonna fit it over our tent frame. All right, the edges are in. We're just gonna zip up the sides so that it's gonna be a completely sealed tent. Let's just do that. For our final steps, we are just putting in cross beams. These guys will help keep your tent nice and strong. You just clip, you just put them on top where the grooves are, right there, there. Doesn't really matter where you put them. Just make sure you put on all four and you should be fine. Don't forget to put in your flood tray. This will be your second layer to your bottom. This material is waterproof and there are nice Velcro strips that will go directly into, well, they'll attach to your tent poles. All right guys, we just finished up setting our six and a half by six and a half tent. And it's huge! In the next chapter, I'll show you guys how to set up your lights and ventilation system. Stick around, I'll see you guys in a bit. All right, so in your six and a half by six and a half kit, you get two light kits. That means you get two MH bulbs and two HPS bulbs. You also get both ballasts and timers and the two ratchet straps. I'm gonna start putting these things together and then I'll show you along the way. Your lights come packaged in two separate boxes, but each box contains everything that that light needs to function. After unpacking everything, we are going to screw in our metal halogen bulbs into our light fixture. Remember to wear gloves or use a paper towel. We don't want to get any oils onto our lights. Next, we'll seal up our light with the glass panel. This will help keep our ventilation system contained and improve exhausting heat. So before we hang our lights, we are going to set up the rope ratchets along the top of our tents just so that it's prepped and ready to go. Take your light hangers and loop them into the reflector so that your lights can be hung with the rope ratchets.
After you have the rope ratchets attached, you can raise your lights to a comfortable level. Also, go ahead and feed your light cable through one of the ducting ports in your tent. You'll repeat this process for the second light. All right, so we have our lights set up. The next thing we have to do is set up our ventilation system. For this, we'll grab our charcoal filters, ducting, duct clamps, duct fans, and rope ratchets. For this part, we'll need a pair of wire cutters and a flathead screwdriver. The first thing I did was attach the rope ratchets to the charcoal filter. I took the other ends of the rope and secured them to the corner of my tent. Afterwards, I just hoisted up my charcoal filter into place. We want the open end of the filter to be facing outwards so it can be connected with our lights with the ducting. Fit the ducting onto the lips of the filter and secure it in place with the duct clamps. Connect the other end of the duct to your first light. I'm simply using a flathead screwdriver to tighten down the duct clamps. Next, measure out the distance between your first light and the second light and cut out a length of ducting to connect both of them together. When you're done with that, we'll install the high output duct fan. The side with the thin lips intakes air and the side with the long lips exhausts air. We're going to flip over our fan and attach a length of ducting to the intake side before installing in our tent. From the top, we'll drop the ducting through an exhaust port, and the rest of our output fan will sit on top of our tent. We'll grab the end of the duct and connect it to our light. Almost done! Let's get our second output fan and attach the duct to the long lip side. This will be our intake fan. Go ahead and find any port to feed the ducting through, and that is it. Moving on, we're setting up our light timers. Turn your dial to the current time and then press down on the tabs for a length of 18 hours on, 6 hours off. Tabs down means your lights are on and tabs up means your lights are off. Also remember to flip the switch on the side of your timer down to have your timer running. When the time comes, we'll plug in our timer into a wall outlet. Our ballast will draw power through the timer and our ballasts will be connected to our light reflectors. Alright guys, if you have the LED package, your setup is going to be just a little easier. We'll need to find our two wire hangers and secure them onto our LEDs. We'll also plug in our cord. Next, we'll hang our lights and that is it. There's no need to connect any exhaust ducting to our LEDs because it's already running pretty cool. Just connect your exhaust output directly to your charcoal filter and your light setup is finished. So for the rest of this glorious guide, I'm gonna be doing most of this video with the HID setup. For everyone who has our LEDs lights, do not feel left out because all of this information is still gonna apply to you. Plus, a little later on, I'm gonna be doing a huge section all about LEDs, the spectrum of light that they produce, and all the huge advantages that it, uh, our LEDs do come with. So you guys should not feel left out. I'll be going over everything with you as always. Alright guys, we just finished setting up our tent, we've also installed our lights and ventilation system. The next thing we have to do is install our hydroponic system. That means I'll be going over the oxygen pot system and of course if you got the soil medium, I'll be going over that as well. And of course I'll be taking it one step at a time so we don't skip anything. Stick around guys. The first thing we are going to do is set up our reservoir. Step 1. Unzip the tank and lay it out in front of you. Step 2. Around the edge of the cover, you'll find vertical pockets. Insert the support poles into these slots. Step 3. Next, take the black tubes with the metal connectors and insert them into the pockets on the inside. Step 4. 
Next, we'll be putting on the bottom tap. The bottom tap comes with two rubber washers. Make sure to use one washer on the inside and one on the outside. And the last part of the reservoir is to set up the top overflow tap. Again, make sure to place one rubber washer on the inside and one rubber washer on the outside. Next, we're gonna set up the buckets. Take the rubber piece and stick them into the bottom of the buckets. Take the three-way connector and stick them into the rubber piece. Make sure to stick them far enough in so the buckets sit flat on the ground. Take the plastic stopper and stick it into the side of the brain bucket. Then take the plastic elbow and stick it into the hole closer to the timer. You can use some WD-40 to help it in. For the next part, grab the glossy urethane tube and connect all of the pots together with the brain bucket to form a huge loop. The tube is intentionally left in one long piece so that you can cut the tube into whatever length works best for you. I'm doing a standard 2x3 setup. I'm going to cut the tube in 2 feet increments and leave one piece at 3 feet. The 3 feet piece will be used on the ends to create the loop. Take a tape measure and measure out the cuts. I use a pair of scissors to cut my tubes. I'm using my cut tube as a stencil for the other pieces. Connect all the tubes to create a loop with the brain bucket. Placement of the brain bucket is important. We want our brain bucket inside of our grow tent with our oxygen pots because both the pots, the brain bucket, and connector tubes have to be on the same level plane. Setting up the pumps. Put one pump in the brain bucket and one pump in the reservoir. Attach the matted tube with the anti-siphon valve into the pump in the reservoir. Then put the open side in the brain bucket. Attach the other tube into the pump in the brain bucket. Then put the open side in the reservoir. We'll need to find a way to secure the tubes to our reservoir. We use zip ties. After, grab the power cord for your reservoir pump and plug it into the top two outlets while the drain pump needs to be plugged in to the two bottom outlets. Let's set our timer next. Set the current time to the white arrow. Next, select the time to flood your oxygen pots by pushing the green tabs outwards. Each tab will last 15 minutes. The switch on the right side of the timer dial is a manual control. Push the switch up will flood the pots. Leave the switch in the middle will set the timer to do the work for you and set the switch down will completely shut off your brain bucket. Inside of the brain bucket are some controlled float valves that will regulate the height of the flood waters and drainage of the pots. You can adjust the flood level by adjusting the height of the float valves. All right, your VersaGrow system is fully assembled. And with that, your grow package is fully put together, up and running. You're ready to put in plants into your tent and most of the work is gonna be fully automated for you. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time.